Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and in this mini Unity tutorial I'm going to show you how you can create a jump scare for your game. Now a jump scare comes in three stages. Firstly you have the basic scene where your environment is set. I have this simple scene set up here, not too fancy, just a hallway. The second step is to actually create the jump scare, i.e. what you want to see on the screen. And the third step is either the trigger or the timer for which you set the jump scare active. So because we already have step one out the way, we'll move straight on to step two. So what I want to happen in this scene is I want to walk down this hallway and then at this point, say around here, trigger a jump scare. Now a jump scare is usually done in two factors, it's visual and it's audio. So it's both quite shocking in what you see and hear. So down here, I have a couple of things imported. I have a scream sound already and I have a zombie which I've got from the asset store. So this is what I'm going to use. Now the way I usually do it, which I find to be quite dynamic, is to set up a separate camera for where you would see. Now I've done this in the first person view, so I'm going to set up a new camera at the exact point where my first person character is. So right click and I'm going to create a new camera. So you can see down here the camera perspective sorry, is exactly the same. So I'm going to drag and drop that onto the FPS controller. So no matter which one I click on, the camera preview is going to be the same. So it's this camera that's going to represent the jump scare. So on this camera now, I'm going to put on a model of this zombie right there. And then we just need to get this zombie into position so we could see it uh, as, as we, it would be quite shocking. So let's move it around. Now, obviously, you can have the zombie represented in a different way. I'm just going to uncouple it and increase the size. You could have it as maybe blood on the screen. Um, pretty much anything, I guess. Anything which would be shocking, as that's what a jump scare would be. So you can see the zombie is there, and I would like it to be a bit closer, kind of in your face kind of thing. So we can see in the camera preview, we just need to move him down a little to about there. So it's all about getting it in the right place. Maybe about there. Okay, so that looks pretty decent. And what I want to happen as well, lighting also plays a nice effect. So I'm gonna add quite a bright point light to the front of the zombie. So right click and let's go to light and let's have a point light. Let's bring it into position about here and increase the intensity quite high. And then we can again, visualize. So you can see already in this camera preview down here that we're getting something that would appear quite shocking to suddenly appear on your screen. And it might also be worth playing around with the field of view in the camera as well. So it kind of stretches how the image currently looks. So you can play around more with everything about it. So as I say, this is the step where we create whatever is shocking. So I'm going to set the field of view probably to about 74 maybe. I'd say that's probably decent. We have the bright light and we're also going to work with some alpha in the canvas on some UI. So UI, raw image, and I'm going to stretch this to the full screen and I'm going to taint it black and let's do zero, 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 zero. Now, obviously when we press play, we should be able to see nothing but black. Let's just have a quick look at that. So we can see black. So the way we're going to do this is using alpha. So if you click the color on the raw image, you can change the alpha here. So I'm going to start with an alpha of 200 and we're going to create a animation for this to kind of make it flicker. So if we click on our animation tab and click on create, and I'll just call it a new animation. I'm not being too fussy with this. And let's click the record button and set the first keyframe. So let's set the first keyframe and retype 200 as our alpha. And then by the 30th keyframe, which is half a second, 30, enter. Let's have the alpha back to 255. And then by the 40th keyframe, so 40, and hit enter, let's have the alpha much lower. So let's have it about 160. I think 160 is a pretty decent number. And then by the, let's say 60th keyframe, it's back at full. So by the 70th keyframe, let's have it flicker again. So let's have it back at 200. And by the, let's say 90th keyframe, 
it's full again, so 255. And by the 95th keyframe, so we've gone much shorter here, let's have the alpha as 160 again. And this jump sale is going to last around two seconds, I think. So let's have this as one, two, five, just over that two second mark. And let's have the alpha back at full. Black, two, five, five. And then stop the recording. So if we press play now, we should be able to see a flickering motion. Now, what I want to do is animate the zombie as well. Now, this zombie is from the Asset Store. You've probably already seen it if you've been looking at this kind of thing on uh, the Unity Asset Store. But I want to drag and drop this walk animation onto the zombie itself. So we'll be able to see him walking. And I'm going to turn off this raw image because we don't need it on right now. So, heading back into our scene. We can turn off this camera as well because we don't actually need it right now as we just want to have this scene as it were. So next we need to add in the audio. So let's create a new game object, empty. And let's F2 and rename, and just have it scream object. <clears throat> and then we just drag and drop this scream onto there. And untick play on awake. So we don't actually need it <clears throat> um, playing as soon as the scene starts. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so what we need to do now is we have the jump scare set, we have the scene set, we need to do our trigger or timer. And I'll explain how to do both, but I'm going to start with the trigger. So let's start with a script, create C sharp script, and let's have this jump trigger. So within here, what we need to do is set a couple of variables, which is going to be the player camera, the secondary camera, and the screen object and the uh, raw image that we've just created. So let's get rid of everything within the public class and start afresh there. So public audio source, and let's just call it screen. Next is gonna be the player. So public game object, the player. Next one is gonna be the new camera that we created. So public game object. Let's call it um, jump cam. And finally, public game object, and we'll call it flash img. So we're going to use void on trigger enter, open close bracket, open curly bracket. And what we'll do is we will first play the screen. So screen dot play, open close bracket, semicolon. Next, we'll turn off the player camera and turn on the jump scare camera at the same time. So jump cam dot set active true, which would mean the player dot set active is false. Semicolon. Next, we need to set the flashing image on true. So flash img dot set active true. Now, to end this, we need to use an I enumerator. So, I enumerator, and let's call it end jump, open close bracket, open curly bracket, and then let's close that. And hopefully, well, if you use a mono developer least, it should turn blue, which means we're doing this right. What we'll do is we'll yield return new wait for seconds, and we'll wait for about two points, maybe. 0, 3, F, so just over two seconds. And then after that, what we'll do is we'll turn the player back on. So the player dot set active true. And then we'll turn the jump cam off. Jump cam dot set active false semicolon. And then we'll turn the flashing image off too. So flash img dot set active false. So to, in, to get this running after we have triggered the event, what we need to do is start coroutine and in brackets, end jump, open close bracket, and then close bracket again, semicolon, and save. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So we have the trigger set now. We have all three features of having a jump scare in. We just need to like, put the trigger in the scene. So game object, 3D object, cube. And let's place it where we want the jump scare to happen. So around there. So let's increase the scale to uh, 20 by 20. And tick is trigger. Turn off mesh renderer. And then jump trigger straight onto that trigger object. So scream. It's going to be a scream object. The player is going to be first person character. Into there. Camera is going to be the jump cam. And flash image is going to be the raw image that we created. And now when we press play, brace yourselves because we're going to hear a scream. So there we go. That's how we can create, <coughs> excuse me, a jump scare via a trigger. So I'll also run through how you can do it via timer as well. So the script is virtually the same. So void on trigger enter then becomes void start. So then after void start, all this then moves into the coroutine. So if you cut everything apart from start coroutine and put it at the top of end jump, so first few lines into there, and at the very, very start, you need to put yield, return, new, wait for seconds, and let's wait for maybe five seconds before we actually um, do anything, and then save that there. So what's happening here is the script is starting and it's instantly starting the coroutine. It waits for five seconds and then it does the jump scare. So instead of it being on a cube, we can just have this on a standard game object. So let's get rid of that cube. Game object, create empty, put the jump trigger onto there and just quickly reset those in there. So the player, screen, the jump cam and flashing image. So now it doesn't matter whereabouts in the scene we are. We could be here. So that's how you can create a jump scare. There are loads of different types of jump scares. You could have like things crashing through windows, but the sequence of events is still going to be the same. You still have the main scene itself. You still have the jump scare itself and you still have the trigger or timer. So guys, have a play around, see what kind of jump scares you can create. Let me know in the comments what kind of things you're creating with these jump scares. And guys, thank you very much for watching.